Beyond Meat seems to be taking the world by storm. More and more restaurants are adding Beyond Meat to their menu and their stock continues to climb. But I'm here to tell you that Beyond Meat isn't all it's worked up to be and how it might be negatively impacting your health. In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything that is wrong with Beyond Meat. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate, I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. The first thing that is wrong with Beyond Meat is that it is not healthy and it actually contains several harmful ingredients. The ingredients include water, pea protein, expeller pressed canola oil, refined coconut oil, rice protein, natural flavor, cocoa butter, mung bean protein, methylcellulose, potato starch, apple extract, pomegranate extract, salt, potassium chloride, vinegar, lemon juice concentrate, sunflower lecithin, and beetroot juice extract for color. For anyone who's counting, that is 20 ingredients and there are a few red flags that jump out at me immediately. Let's start at the top of the list with pea protein. The Beyond Meat burger markets itself by saying there are 20 grams of protein in every patty. First off, pea protein is not a complete protein source. This means it does not contain all essential amino acids, which all animal protein does. And I assume this is why these burgers also contain mung bean protein and rice protein to fill in the gaps. Now, before we hit on pea protein too much, it is actually one of the most easily digestible plant sources of protein, on paper at least. The Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score, or PDCAAS, is a method of evaluating the quality of a protein based on humans ability to digest it. One is the highest score and this is where you'll find eggs, milk, whey protein, and even soy, but soy has its own set of issues that we're not going to get into today. Chicken has a score of 0.95, beef has a score of 0.92, and pea protein concentrate is 0.89, which I mean yeah, that's, that's pretty good, again, on paper. But even though the PDC AAS score accounts for digestibility, it does not account for amino acids that are lost in the ileum, which is a section of your colon. And this matters because this is where most anti-nutrient absorption takes place. Peas are high in anti-nutrients such as lectins and phytates. So are we really getting the amino acids that are in pea protein? It's hard to know. But even beyond protein, where is the nutrition? Heme iron, B12, selenium, zinc, CLA, these are all in beef, but not in Beyond Meat. My other concern with pea protein is the processing it has to go through. Hexane is often used to separate the protein in plants from the oil and fiber. And what is hexane, you might be asking, and why does it matter? I like how this plant-based website, vegfrequentlyaskedquestions.com, puts it. In a nutshell, hexane is a solvent used in the extraction process to isolate the protein. However, not all of the hexane can be removed. Hexane is a chemical neurotoxin, that's a fact. The debate is around how much of it does there need to be to cause harm. Short answer, we don't know yet. Based on current safety limits, protein powders should be pretty safe. But if you want to be cautious and avoid it, that's completely understandable. Hexane is a chemical neurotoxin. It is a byproduct of petroleum. The EPA has this to say about the side effects of hexane. Inhalation exposure of humans to high levels of hexane causes mild central nervous system effects, including dizziness, giddiness, slight nausea, and headache. Chronic exposure to hexane in the air is associated with polyneuropathy in humans, with numbness in the extremities, muscular weakness, blurred vision, headaches, and fatigue observed. 
Moving along, the next red flag ingredient is canola oil. Now, if you've watched my video on vegetable oil, I'll link it above, you will already know how I feel about canola oil, which is considered a vegetable oil. But basically, the type of oil that canola oil is, is very delicate. It oxidizes very easily when exposed to heat, light, and oxygen. Consuming oxidized oils leads to oxidative stress in the body. This plays a major part in the development of chronic and degenerative illness such as cancer, autoimmune disorders, aging, cataract, arthritis, and cardiovascular and neurodegenerative diseases. Yes, this canola oil says that it's expeller pressed, which would mean it wouldn't be exposed to much heat during processing, but I am 99.9% .9 sure that this burger is gonna be exposed to some heat before cooking. Nobody's eating this raw. On top of that, heating canola oil also leads to trans fat being created. In one study, the trans fat content in canola oil was between 0.56% and 4.2% of the total fat. And then let's talk about natural flavors. This is such a vague term. I have no idea how this is allowed to be on nutrition labels. When we hear the word natural, we assume that it's actually natural and not chemically created. However, since the FDA hasn't officially defined natural, it can be used to describe almost any type of food. Here's a description of what natural flavor really means. Natural flavors are complex mixtures created by specially trained food chemists known as flavorists. In addition to their original flavor source, these mixtures can contain more than 100 different chemicals, including preservatives, solvents, and other substances. These are defined as incidental additives. However, food manufacturers aren't required to disclose whether these additives come from natural or synthetic sources. As long as the original flavoring source comes from a plant or animal material, it is classified as a natural flavor. So what exactly is the natural flavor in Beyond Beef? It is anybody's guess. The next thing that I think is wrong with Beyond Meat burgers is that they are highly processed. This sort of ties in with my first point, but let's start off by taking a look at what the process actually is to extract protein from peas. It's a pretty extensive process. But even zooming way, way out, look at how many ingredients there are. All of these components need to come from different places, be processed differently, and then they all come together to be processed to create this burger. There's an Instagram infographic, I think Biohacking Chick created it, where she shows where each ingredient came from in the world to create the Beyond Meat burger. I can't find it right now. If I can, I'll put it up on the screen. But I mean, yeah, that really just puts it into perspective. There's a really good article on medium.com called Is Food Tech the Future of Food? I'll link to it down below if you wanna check it out afterwards. Basically, it talks about how we're innovating and creating all these new processes and foods, but are they even safe to consume, let alone sustainable? Any changes to genes can have unintended impacts on an organism, species, or ecosystem. That's why safety studies are so important. While there are suggested assessments and regulations being proposed for the USDA, they are riddled with loopholes that would allow many gene-edited foods to, to slip through the cracks. The World Health Organization states that it is not possible to make blanket safety statements about GMOs. They must be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Without such studies, we are operating largely in the dark in making major decisions about our food system. Companies introducing these new GMOs to the market are essentially self-regulated and are asking consumers to blindly trust them. We are the first population eating these types of food, food if you can even call it that, and we have no idea what the ramifications will be. On the other hand, we evolved eating meat, and there is no study proving that meat causes any disease. On top of that, meat can be raised sustainably. Promoting people vote with their dollar and choose ethically raised meat is a simpler and more effective solution. While Beyond Meat stock seems to be doing increasingly well, 
I ultimately don't think that people want to be eating these fake meat, no matter how much they are pushed down our throats. I was in Canada in the summer where I'm from, and I saw a clear example of this at Tim Hortons. Last year, they introduced the Beyond Meat Burger, and I could not believe the amount of advertising money they put into this. After a tough morning, you crave satisfying mouth-watering plants. Plants? Plants. Yeah. Try Tim Horton's new 100% plant-based Beyond Meat breakfast sausage. You're welcome. Billboards everywhere. TV ads on all the time. So I was actually a bit surprised when they announced in September they were pulling it from all of their stores except for in Ontario and BC. And then what happened next? In January, they pulled it from Ontario and BC as well. I think this just goes to show that the product isn't what the market wants. Yes, when we're online, plant-based advocates are everywhere and they're loud. But does that actually translate to the real world? I don't think so. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the Beyond Meat Burger in the comment section down below. Do you think this craze is here to stay or will it die down? Let me know down below. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye guys.